This is the Dan Matheny Show. Hello and welcome. Today's topic is Let's Talk About Music. Today's guest is John Gifford. He is a friend who is a truck driver. So we are going to talk about his experience with what he does and then dive in. But before we get started, let's cut to a quick commercial break so I can get him on the phone. Oh, hey Jim. It's certainly a nice day for a swim. I just got done with work trying to get my second win. I got the drink for you. Thanks. Need to pick me up? Continental Cola. Twice the caffeine with vitamins and minerals. Start your day over with Continental Cola. We are back with our guest, John Gifford. Hello, John. How you doing? Hey, how's it going, man? Awesome. Welcome to the show. It's good to have you. Oh, it's good to be here. Good to be here. Indeed. I know you are a truck driver. How long have you been one? Uh, A little over 20 years. I've been over the road, all 48 states, southeast regional, California region, Midwest. So I've done flatbed, tankers, and a little bit of dry van, but not much. Right. Through the years, how have you occupied your time driving on the road? A lot of music and uh, just a lot of, you know, free time in your head, you know? Gotcha. Like the social apps, all that fun stuff. Uh, Not so much the, the social apps as much as just finding stuff, like little things to do with your time. Say you're getting off on an exit and you're going over to a truck stop or where you're going to park or whatever. You know, looking around your surroundings and seeing if there's an ethnic restaurant you can go to. You know, maybe a Mexican or an Indian food restaurant or, you know, a local dive bar or music joint or something like that. Indeed. Nothing like a new experience. I really like Indian food and especially Mexican food. Oh, yeah. I love Mexican food. Coming from California, you know, they are very near and dear to my heart. Indeed. What kind of music do you like when you're driving on the road? Actually, I'm pretty eclectic. Some situations, you don't really have a choice. Across I-40 in Arizona and New Mexico, Mm -hmm. that's about 800 miles of Navajo or Catholic channel music. So, you know, if you're listening to the radio, that's what you got. And for a long time, there was no such thing as, like, satellite radio and stuff, especially in 18-wheelers. Right. Because you just didn't want to pay for it. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it was to the point where, you know, like, say, if the truck came with the CD player, if the CD player broke, the company doesn't fix it. You're just stuck with whatever's there. Then it became, you know, um, when Internet got to the point where, you know, you can get, like, unlimited for your cell phone and stuff, then it became, like, iHeartRadio, Pandora, you know, stuff like that. I listen to a very wide variety. Anything between opera and classical to blues, to jazz, to country, to rock and roll, rap, hip-hop. I listen to just about everything. Okay, give me some groups or bands that you like to listen to while you're driving on the road. Rolling Stones. You know, I kind of grew up with them, as a lot of us did who were in our 40s and 50s. Johnny Cash is another one that's heavy on my playlist. Love a lot of his music, whether it be, you know, the outlaw country or the gospel. You know, uh, listen to a bit of Lip Biscuit, Five Finger Death Punch, instrumental music and stuff. A lot of, say, like uh, The Pussy or uh, Bach. You just want a nice, relaxing drive and you want to enjoy the scenery. Yeah, that's, that's what I listen to. I have a 36 gig zip drive that is just jam packed with just tons of music, and I can just stick it in random and it's got 10,000 songs. Just play whatever. Right. Give me a favorite group to where that song is just stuck in your head and you really love that song and you can hear it over and over. Rolling Stones, Paint It Black. That's an awesome song, especially like the covers I've heard from bands like Halloween and many other bands that have covered that song. The cover always turns out awesome. So that's a good choice. Oh, there's a, there's actually a chick on YouTube who I do not know. I just ran across it a couple of days ago. Filipino, maybe? Mm-hmm. And she has this, uh, kind of like a lay-down string instrument she does a cover of it. Her name's Luna. Um, it's really easy to, to look on YouTube. But she does an amazing job of doing a cover on it. Right. I mean, it's just, it, you know, with Painted Black had the satire in the back anyways, or sitar, or whatever you want to call it. I think it's called sitar. Yeah. You know, in the back anyways, that kind of gave it that eerie sound. If they had known about this instrument, I honestly believe they would have used it. 
I mean, I just ran across this like yesterday. Mm -hmm. And when I heard it, I was like, oh my God, this is the actual sound that they had to have been going for. And they just missed it by just a fraction of an inch, you know? Yeah, a lot of bands have their own styles on how they compose music. We're at a point where we're about to take a quick break and we will be back. It's the Matheny Madness Holiday Sale. No money down on new cars ranging from Versus, Pathfinders, Sentras, and Ultimas. Come today, 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 and drive away in a brand new car. The price of tags and title are not included. Sale ends December 31st. All right, we are back with John Gifford. Well, there are pit stops along your travels. When you are done with the day, what do you like to do when you're unwinding? My favorite thing to do is to find a guitar center and annoy the employee. I played a lot of instruments as a child growing up. I mean, you know, I was in bands all the way up into my 30s. After my hearing started digressing and my eardrums ruptured and I had to have surgery and stuff, I kind of fell away from music. But that doesn't mean that I can't still go into a guitar center and annoy the hell out of people. And I truly enjoy it. Gotcha. I know that we're going back to music here. You know, on the road, I'm sure it's different from when you're winding down. When you're winding down at the end of the day, let's just say you got to the motel or the hotel or wherever you're staying, you want something to unwind with. What kind of music do you like to listen to when you're unwinding for the day? To unwind for the day, usually I'm getting ready to, you know, shower and go to bed. I try to get a walk in because I don't walk that much. Every morning when I wake up and every evening when I go to bed, I try to walk throughout sunrise and sunset. So during that time period, I like to listen to slower music and sometimes wildlife type sounds and stuff. Got like critters of the rainforest and, you know, back in the morning, there's nothing like starting out in the morning, getting your blood flowing and going to jogging to say like Molly Creek or something like that. Get, you know, your energy up. But then in the afternoon, pick out some Hatsy Klein or something like that. Maybe some Hank Williams Sr., you know, tone down the day, kind of unwind. Yeah, I like um, Hank Williams and Patsy Cline. What's your favorite Patsy Cline song? I go out after midnight. Let's see. What about Hank Williams? Oh, it's always a tear in my beer. Tear in my beer. Yeah, that's a yeah. classic. Yeah. I mean, you know, to be honest with you, I think that was probably the first song I ever heard of him. And, you know, I mean, I just, it always stuck with me. I don't know why it did. I just happen to like it, you know? Yeah, the reason why I asked is because I grew up listening to Hank Williams, and my dad would love listening to Hank Williams and Hank Snow and all the old country music and 70s country. So that's why I asked, because that just came Yeah, my father did too, uh, like Marty Robinson and, of course, Willie Nelson, you know, and all that. Yeah, you know, they just kind of stuck with me. Plus, it helped that when my father passed away, I inherited, like, his CD collection. And he had, like, all the old remakes of, like, all the old Western and country songs from, you know, like, say, like, the 50s and the 60s and the 70s that, like, you completely forgot about. Like, yeah. he had them. So, I mean, I've got, like, hundreds of CDs that I've converted over to a zip drive of this music. And, uh, I mean, it's just, it's amazing, you know, because it takes, when, you know, at least for me, when I hear it, it takes me back to a simpler time. Today's life is so hustle and bustle, and people don't stop. They don't take time out for themselves. They don't go out anymore. They don't socialize outside anymore. When they socialize, they socialize online. You don't really see, like, uh, organized dances and, you know, stuff like that, like back in the 50s and the 60s, like you did, you know? Absolutely. To me, it seems like a simpler time. Absolutely, especially the sense of community isn't what it used to be either. So, and I can totally relate because when I wind down at the end of the day, I listen to sounds also, and I just listen to stuff that's soft and slow. This is an awesome conversation, but Red Cross is serious business. We'll be right back. Disaster victims need your help. The American Red Cross provides victims of disaster with food, shelter, counseling, and more. Your support for the American Red Cross Disaster Relief Fund helps victims of thousands of disasters across the country each year. To make a donation, contact the American Red Cross today. Call 1-800-RED-CROSS or visit redcross.org. We are back with our guest, John Gifford. Anyway, John, as a kid, I would do the honk signal to get truckers to honk their horns. Do people still do that? Uh, they do. However, there's a lot of conflict involved with it these days. If you have another vehicle in front of you, you could scare them because some of the horns these days are really, really loud. 
So, you know, you have to be really aware of your surroundings when, you know, trying to do that. The biggest thing that I get, though, is parents trying to get me to honk the horn when their child is asleep to wake them up and scare them. Right. Now, I do this whenever it's possible because it's absolutely hilarious. Right. Because they don't realize that you're waking this kid up in a really bad way. That kid is going to wake up in a terrible mood and he's going to start crying. And they think it's funny and they think it's going to be worth it. But I'm telling you, it's not. Because I end up seeing that kid 15 miles down the road getting his butt whooped because he ain't straightened up when they got a stupid truck driver to blow his horn out. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful around your surroundings. You know, you don't want to scare anybody else or startle them. You know, on an interstate going through a major city, you don't want to disturb people who are, you know, you want to be, you want to be a cautious neighbor. You know, you don't want to disturb people who are in an apartment complex or whatever. Right. What's the dumbest question you get as a truck driver? How do you become a truck driver? <laughs> right. I get that one a lot. I get, how do you become a truck driver a lot? Can you teach me to drive your truck? I, I just get a whole slew of them. And to be honest with you, I don't recommend for people to become truck drivers. Yeah. You know, and a, lo and a lot of people are like, what? And the second you tell them not to do something, they're going to do it. That's the rule. That's what it is. It is literally the most dangerous job, statistically speaking, in the country. What is your favorite song of all time? Whether you're winding down, whether you're driving on the road, what, what is that one song that you love? Uh, the one song that I just can't turn off the radio type deal, you know, I have to listen to it, Johnny Cash, When Man Comes Around. I remember when that song first came out, and I loved it. That's like an awesome song. But I love the guitar riff on it, you know? Exactly. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a timeless classic song, completely original. You know, n nothing else really has quite the tempo for it. You know, it's just, it's, it's a completely original song. What is the song you find the most annoying? The most annoying? Well, that's that uh, song, Who Let the Dogs Out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you, man, these, these people, dude, they made a lot of money off this song because it still gets airtime today. I hear it all the time. You know, I first had this one DJ. Mm-hmm. He's in Chicago, and, you know, this thing is uh, the Dog Pound, and so he constantly plays that song. You hear it, like, at least once a day off his show, and I think it's only, like, a two-hour show. But if you're in Chicago for two days, and you don't change the station, you're going to hear that song twice, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, yeah, it, it, it annoys the crap out of it. Uh, you know, the thing about it is, it's still, every time I listen to the Dog Pound the Kennel, I still sing it. It's catchy. <laughs> it's annoying. It gets right. stuck in your head. Yeah. You know, it's like that stupid fox song. Yeah. Anyway, before we wrap things up, Try Yummy Gum Breath Freshener. Chew gum and freshen your breath in five amazing flavors. Grape, strawberry, raspberry, blueberry, and chocolate flavors that are guaranteed to last 30 minutes or longer. John, it's been awesome to have you on the show. Thank you for joining us today. Any last words? Roger that, man. I appreciate it. You have me on and all. And uh, you keep the uh, shiny side up and the rubber side down. Awesome. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And this has been a Dan Matheny production. Tune in next week for Let's Talk About Sports. Make sure to click subscribe. Till next time, take care.